Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about why butterflies are shiny for a bug bits video in conjunction with a new blog that I've just started with a friend called Ask an Entomologist. I felt felt particularly motivated to talk about this, A, because like almost everyone just talks about morpho butterflies, and while they are really beautiful, they're just one type of way that you can get a shiny butterfly, and that's by no means comprehensive. So let's get to it. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I want to talk about the two main categories of how these structures work. The first is incoherent scattering, and this is about exactly what it sounds like. It's it's pretty much random. Basically, light goes into an unorganized structure and comes out in a random fashion. A good example of this is that opalescent glass that you see and light goes in and then is scattered into orange light on the other side. This isn't particularly used in butterflies. There's one family where it's commonly seen, which are the peards, which are the sulfur and white butterflies. And it's either used to make the white whiter or to reflect UV iridescence. And considering the fact that you probably have never looked at a small white butterfly and were like, oh my god, it's the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen, we're going to move on. The second type is coherent scattering. And this is what's employed by like pretty much everything. Butterflies, beetles, hummingbirds, peacocks. Yeah. Anyway, so what happens here is you have a very, very organized and very regular structure and light comes in and bounces out in a predictable fashion. Okay, so butterflies and moths are in the order Lepidoptera, which in Greek just means scale wing, and that's because they are covered in little tiny scales, like lizards or like snakes or anything else that would have scales. Anyway, so here on these scales, they have really complicated structures. So if you zoom in a little bit, then you get to this ribbing structure, which is like basically what gives the scale its shape and if you are the type of butterfly that makes their color by structural color on that ribbing you'll find this really 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 tiny nanostructures they usually range in length between about one micrometer to 20 micrometers and if you're like well that's really small but I don't really know what that means the average width of a human hair is about 75 micrometers so really really tiny. So on this really really tiny ribbing structure there's like three main ways that you can make structures to bounce the light back out in a coherent fashion. Their types are aptly named one, two, and three and we're gonna go through them in order. So the first type of these scales is the type one which is the multi-layered reflectors which are specifically in this case the stacked lamellae in the morpho butterflies and how this works is on the morpho butterfly wing on the scale and then on the ribbing structure in that ribbing structure there's a tiny tiny nanostructure which is the stacked lamellae some people think that it looks like a staircase i personally think like it kind of looks like a weird christmas tree but whatever you think it looks like Basically, these structures are placed really, really, really close together. And they're placed so close together that when light comes into the structure, the light can't get back out. It just like bounces around for like a while until it can finally come back out, but it can only come back out straight. It can't come back at an angle. It just like goes in, bounces around, and comes back out on the same angle that it went in. This process is actually how we amplify light with commercial LEDs, but the Morpho butterfly is better than our LEDs. In fact, the Marfa butterfly can reflect 80% light back out of its wings, and since its wings repel water, they are shiny even when it's raining. The coolest thing about this structure is that it produces iridescence that's angle dependent. So the angle at which you view the butterfly means that you can either see the iridescence or you can't. But my favorite morpho is the pearl morpho, and this is where you actually can start seeing how this angle dependence really matters. This isn't the only way that you can get blue, so another type is type 2, and this is also a multi-layered reflector, but it's like a little satellite dish shape. I wanted to start with the Ulysses butterfly because it's the most simple of this type. It's quite blue, um, and basically what happens is light comes in and bounces into this dish and then bounces back out. So the Ulysses butterfly is blue because the discs are really shallow. What happens is as you start messing with how deep or how wide these dishes are, you start getting different colors. In this other butterfly called the peacock butterflies, the dishes are a little bit wider and a little bit deeper. So what happens is the light comes in from the top and if it hits the scale, 
and goes into that structure straight on and bounces back straight, it's green. However, if the light comes in and hits the side of the dish and then gets bounced back across the dish and then comes back out, then it comes out as blue. Which is why when you look at this butterfly, you'll see like this kind of weird like beige shifting like lime green, like bluish turquoisey colors. It's because of this color mixing. So the third type of structure is a gyroid structure and it's found in this really cute green hair streak butterfly. It was assumed for a while that it just like had some pigment no one like really looked at it and then some people started to notice that it would sit on these really bright green leaves that it camouflaged with and would like turn with the sun. People were like hmm that's kind of weird. So they took the butterfly and they started looking at it and they found that it actually reflects polarized iridescence. What happens here is you have the butterfly scale and in that little ribbing structure is you have what's called a gyroid structure and this structure is kind of like a crystal and the fact that it's really regular and repeats often. And what happens is light comes into the structure and it just bounces out in all directions. It's omnidirectional and it comes back as this really pretty green color, a little bit, sometimes it's a little bit blue. and polarized light also comes out of it. So this covers our super bridged and by no means at all comprehensive way that butterflies produce some colors with structure. Butterflies can also use structure and pigments combined. Beetles use structures, like pupa use structures, it's complicated. If you have anything that you want to specifically ask or want me to cover, please leave your thoughts in the comments below. You can also find me on Facebook and on Twitter and you can find me on our blog askentomologist.wordpress.com and all the links and stuff are in the, the description plus all the references so yeah hopefully i will see you guys soon